single member districts do allow citizens more access in their communities to their, to their individual delegates. But also, again, think about the idea of campaigns. And when you are running in a seven or a five or a three, four member district, we all know who have ran in those districts that those campaigns are more costly. You have a greater area to campaign in, you have more direct mail, whatever you do in a campaign, those are more costly. And if you are an advocate in this house and have been over the years of reducing the expense of campaigns, single member districts will be perhaps the greatest step that we can take to do that. I do agree that there have been, we've heard a lot of things loud, but I'm sure, I'm not certain that it's clear. Because we have had a legislative website that's been up and running for over two months. It has had, uh, it's been publicized on the radio, TV, on our own website, numerous media outlets where there's a way to leave written comments. Now bear in mind, that's only one way that people can respond, but they've had that opportunity for over two months. We have received approximately 86 responses. Now we have over a million, I believe 1.1, 1.2 registered voters in West Virginia. I agree that some of the, the opinions that have been expressed have been very strong and, and they have stated their case. But I'm only left to, to, to believe that there are a lot of people that either are not dissatisfied or, sat, or they are satisfied with the, with the representation that they have and the way it's divided up, or they don't really have an opinion on it. In multi-member delegate districts, they disenfranchise groups of voters. Multi-member delegate districts were used embarrassingly in our history in the Jim Crow era in the South. Today, here in West Virginia, they're used, or a result of them, are clearly to disenfranchise rural West Virginia voters. The business community and the citizens in general do not want our district split up into delegate districts. They want our district to remain whole and intact. The, it's been unprecedented the support that we have had to keep our delegate district intact. And I have no doubt that m maybe my colleagues, uh, constituents want single delegate districts. If they do, that's fine. But to say that the whole state wants it, I think is a false statement. We have heard that indeed the courts have recognized that multi-member districts are constitutional. But the courts have also recognized and blatantly stated a preference for single-member districts. And let's just be clear, West Virginia's districts, to my knowledge, multi-member districts, haven't been challenged in such a way that the result would be a redrawing into single-member districts. And so that while it has happened in other states, specific to West Virginia, I don't think that answer, that question has been answered. We have to listen to our constituents. And that's what we in the 30 district is and the other districts have done to listen to their constituents. The constituents in our area, and we're from the same county, have been loud and clear in the 30th district that they want a multi-member district which was agreed upon on our, our delegation at one time.